welcome to our webinar. Uh, today I'd like to talk about our factor series, which is a single emitter based product line, fiber coupled, now available at a number of important wavelengths. My name is Jörg Neukum. I'm uh, responsible for product marketing at Coherence Diode Laser Facility in Mainz, Germany. Let me start with an overview of the pump wavelengths we offer. So uh, essentially from 640 nanometers in the visible red up to above two micron, we have a variety of pump wavelengths available. For example, 640 nanometers for chromium doped crystals like chrome lysaf, uh, we cover 793, 808, 880, 950, 940, 976, but also go beyond that uh, 1532 nanometers for erbium uh, doped crystals or 1908 for holmium doped stuff. We also have some wavelengths at 766 nanometers, 780 nanometers or 852 nanometers, which can be used to pump alkali gases um, for so-called DPAL lasers. And uh, in terms of the packages we offer, uh, it starts with direct beam for like end pumped or rod lasers. Um, fiber coupled products for disc laser pumping or fiber laser pumping, but up to two dimensional arrays to pump very large crystals or gases. With that, let me talk a little bit about the motivation for this talk. So, wavelength stabilized pumps for ytterbium, sodium, or neodymium doped laser media. First of all, there is a market out there. Fiber lasers uh, are very successful currently um, at the terbium pumps. So with uh, one micron, around one micron fiber lasers. Sulium uh, would generate two micron fiber lasers, which have some important applications also in the medical field. And of course, there is a variety of neodymium doped based um, lasers out there, which are used for uh, frequency conversion to generate UV light, for example. And uh, with the recent advantage, uh, advances we've made in the front passivation uh, technologies, we are now able to get to much higher output power per emitter. And uh, that really pushed the limit of the output power. The multi single emitter um, options we are now following here actually is based on single emitters of like 100 micron, 200 micron or 400 micron widths. These single emitters are separated so that we have much more cooling capacity per single emitter available. This is in contrast to a classic laser diode bar where you have uh, the emitters only spaced like 400 micron from each other and there will always be some thermal crosstalk, which limits also the efficiency. But with multi single emitters, we can get a small package, low weight, and still high power. Uh, so we call that the swap optimized modules. And uh, with the front facet technology, which actually stabilizes the um, catastrophic optical mirror damage level uh, on a high stable level, um, with that, we can push the limit for these single emitter based fiber coupled modules. Okay, let me start with the first product, which is our Factor 16. Um, as the name suggests, it contains 16 uh, diode lasers inside, 100 micron each, 100 micron fiber. The whole device is like 12 millimeters high, about 100 millimeters uh, in length, and about 50 millimeters wide. Some of the test data, up to 150 watts at below 12 amps, we achieve a very nice line narrowed spectrum because we're using uh, volume break ratings, which are produced at one of the coherent sites. Um, we have more than, uh, or we have a smaller line width than 0.9 nanometers, um, less than one nanometer line widths here for 90% of energy. Um, and that with, um, overall efficiency for the light out of the fiber uh, of above 50%. Going to the next level, factor 22. Uh, in this case, we use 200 micron stripe uh, emitters, 200 micron fiber, um, 
we have, because we want to push it to the limit, we have some extra uh, cooling capacity here at the fiber coupling port, because there's always some fiber losses, fiber coupling losses. And if you push the limit, also these fiber losses will increase. So you have to take care of the cooling for that. Um, same height, 12 millimeters, about 100 millimeters in length and about 76, less than 80 millimeters wide. And here we see some of the uh, performance data. We get up to the 400 watt level here at about 21 amps, less than 21 amps. We have about 50% efficiency. And again, we have a line width for 90% of energy uh, of below one nanometer. Um, so this is really the, the factor series pushed to an extreme. We've performed live tests even at these accelerated uh, conditions and already achieved uh, several thousand hours uh, with these modules. And um, if this would be an industrial product, we definitely would have to derate it. But the intention here is really to offer something which is small, lightweight for portable applications like in medical or airborne applications. And uh, here, 400 watts, 200 micron, VVG locked with more than 50% efficiency um, is really a great result. If we have a look to some of the data here, just in comparison, 100 micron stripes in the factor 16, 200 micron single emitters in the factor 22. Um, the weight, 230 grams for the factor 16, 500 grams for the factor 22. Um, these weights are actually based on our standard industrial uh, housing. If there is a need to actually go to uh, less weight, there are ways to actually use different materials to reduce the weight if that's necessary. Uh, but important also the high power and still typically 50% of power conversion efficiency. Important in uh, these applications is also the locking performance these volume break ratings actually have two features. They lock the line to a particular value, the spectral line, and keep it there. And uh, in addition, it makes the line small. So here we started out at 15 amps and 20 degrees and measured the line widths. Then we simply increased the temperature and we still kept the line widths um, always below one nanometer. And uh, we also started at 4 amps, 35 degrees, and simply went up the PI curve up to 24 amps. So that's uh, 400 watts output power. And we still kept the line widths. And uh, so we measured in this area quite a number of parameters, and we always stayed below one nanometer of 90% of energy. If you go to high temperature and high current, your whole system heats up so that some portion of the gain curve will be outside of the locking range. Uh, therefore, we don't recommend to operate it here. The spectrum will widen. Um, and also, if you go to very low current, um, this is really, uh, this diode is not very efficiently driven if you run it so far outside of the efficiency maximum. But the key takeaway here is even at 200 uh, micron, uh, 400 watts VVG locked, you get a very wide um, range of temperatures and powers you could operate it. And that means you don't spend, spend too much thoughts on your temperature control. You don't need to control the temperature to a fraction of a degree. Here, a I would say pretty rough um, cooling would most probably be efficient. Uh, also in terms of the numerical aperture, um, here you see a typical value, a lot of power in the middle, going down to less power at the sides. You see the cross sections here for this area, and you see the cross section for this area. And uh, if you start integrating the power starting from the middle, going to outwards, you get more and more power than going to the edge, uh, it becomes less power, but you see that the numerical aperture of uh, 0.6, which essentially is a measure also for the divergence. Um, so we have uh, within a numerical aperture of 1 point, uh, 0 0.16, we have above 90% of power content. That actually helps also when you splice 
the units to a fiber laser. That I like to spend a few words for pump modules, um, which are intended for the sodium fiber laser. You see here we have a very small one, just three emitters, 10 watts, very moderately driven. Um, we have the same chips here, moderately driven up to 40 watts. And with our newest generation, um, we can increase the power, uh, go to 6 amps, 80 watts output power. Um, again, 45% efficiency. Uh, keep in mind that 793 nanometer laser material is by nature a little bit less efficient than 976. So that's quite a good value here. Uh, 106 micron fiber core and the dimension for the factor 16 is pretty much the same as we showed before. Um, there's also a way to even higher powers. Keep in mind here we only work with 100 micron stripes, 100 micron single emitters. We can take a factor 22 and put more of these in. So by adding more single emitters, increasing the power. But the bigger step would be to use 200 micron stripes in a factor 16 in a 200 micron fiber or even 200 micron stripes in a factor 22. So that uh, still gives us some headroom to increase power if needed. Then let me talk a little bit about the neodymium, neodymium pumping, which in principle is uh, well known uh, since pretty long time. Traditionally, people would pump it at the highest absorption at 8 or 8 nanometers. If we do that, we actually pump here in a metastable state, get some relaxation, uh, which means we generate heat in the crystal to the upper laser level. We get the laser light out and we generate more heat by having relaxation here. So it's a four level laser starting here, second level, third level, and fourth level. So it's a four level laser if you pump it 808 with uh, generating heat within this relaxation. Pumping it 880 nanometers would mean we make it a three level laser. So we pump into the upper laser level, get the laser emission and generate heat only here. Um, this has an advantage, obviously, because uh, with this lower quantum defect, so the closer the pump wavelengths and the emission wavelengths is, the smaller your quantum defect, which means you generate less heat in the crystal. And uh, that allows you to operate at higher powers with um, you know, less effect of a thermal lensing, which means you get a very nice TM00 uh, single mode beam out of that, um, which is pretty useful for second and third harmonic generation because your efficiency of the harmonic generation depends on your beam quality. Um, there is additional advantages if you pump at 880, it's a shallow absorption, um, which essentially also means um, the wavelengths wouldn't need to be stabilized. Um, but we have two polarizations which have pretty much the same absorption here. So that makes our absorption polarization independent. And that's an important factor for um, birefringent crystals. So here we have uh, polarization independence also important because we pump with the fiber, which to some extent destroys the polarization. Um, and the shallow absorption means we are not absorbing all the light at a short penetration depth, but we can use a much larger crystal and pump it more or less homogeneously. And the larger crystal allows us also to get the heat extraction from the crystal um, much better. So uh, we have again, less thermal lensing better beam quality coming out, more suitable for frequency uh, conversion. So with that, um, I'd like to show you the products which cover this range. Um, we have three different wavelengths available, 888, 885, 878.6. All make these neodymium dove crystals to a three-level um, three laser system. Um, at 888, Coherent uh, owns a patent. Um, and we're happy to actually provide a license for every uh, module which we sell at this wavelength. So having here the extended life series, because we operated at very moderate uh, operating currents, uh, 200 micron fiber with 200 micron stripes 
remember at 976, we were operating this for 21 amps. So here, this is moderately driven. Degradation is really small, and therefore we call that the extended life series, which is proven with uh, many uh, 10,000 hours of life test. Um, here, you may have a look at uh, the factor 10, 10 singlimeters producing 65 watts, and here the factor 2250 watts. Uh, cranking up the current, we already save some emitters to get to the same output power. So uh, that actually gives us um, the same power with less emitters, with less material, so with less cost. And uh, that means we have a better dollar per watt ratio in this case. But if we go to our power series, you could see here we use uh, 200 micron uh, stripes and run them harder, not nine, am not nine amps anymore. Um, and here we get 65 watts with six emitters and we get 150 watts with 16. At the extended life, it was 150 watts with 22 emitters. So this year still is 200 micron fiber. And that again gives you a cost advantage in terms of dollar per watt. Also important for these uh, products which pump neodymium doped crystals, this normally is a free space imaging of the beam onto the crystal. In these cases, you like to have a suitable pump profile, which means close to flat top. And whether we do that for 200 micron or for 400 micron, you could see here the measures. Um, we achieve a uh, nice flat top profile, which again supports um, a good beam quality for the uh, laser beam coming out at 1060 nanometers and that also helps in the frequency conversion later on. So let me just summarize. Um, we've shown great results uh, for the factor 22 pushed to the limit 400 watts 976 nanometers in 200 micron fiber. Uh, suitable for medical or mobile applications, airborne applications. Uh, same for the factor 16, 150 watts, 106 micron, 976. Both are intended for turbine pumping. Um, we also have other wavelengths available, 793 for sulium, 88X for neodymium uh, doped crystals. And all these are BBG stabilized, and uh, we have demonstrated that we have a wide power and temperature range in which we keep the wavelengths locked uh, to less than one nanometer, 90% of energy. Uh, we also have shown that the beam parameters can be adopted for different fiber sizes and um, give us a flat top for direct beam applications or where we use a pump to use crystals. And uh, of course, we've done uh, excessive environmental stress tests, um, shock and vibration, temperature cycling, and a lot of life tests to verify the robustness of these products. With that, I uh, like to thank you for your attention. I'd like to thank Photonics Next for the uh, chance to present here. And I'd like to thank all my colleagues who contributed to this talk. With that, I think we're open for questions. Thank you very much.